Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in, Andy here. This video is going to be a bit of a first for me because I usually talk about PCs or PC related stuff, sometimes cameras. Today I'm going to be talking about a Mac. Specifically, this is the new Apple Silicon MacBook Air, the M1. This is just the base level model with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is new for me. This is the first brand new Mac I've ever owned and the first time I've used a Mac at all since 2008. I worked for Apple for a few months and bought a Mac when I was doing that. That was an old plastic MacBook. Um, so yeah, it's been a while. And so even though it's been a really long time, over 10 years since I've used a Mac as my own personal computer, I've always found them kind of alluring. You know, Mac OS is pretty, it's always supposed to be super polished. But the reason I've never bought one and never made the switch, one, I'm a PC gamer, sort of off and on, but enough that it's an incentive to stay on PC. And then also there's just like the price situation that when you look at what you can get if you're willing to shop, you know, bargains on PC versus Mac, especially when they were using the same hardware, it's just, you know, it's tough to, you know, pull the trigger on a Mac if you're a real computer nerd. But the new Apple Silicon, uh, you know, at least based on all the hype, all the benchmarks I've seen, it looks like a game changer, so it's finally my excuse to, to buy a Mac and pull the trigger. And I'm not usually an early adopter, I like to wait. Um, but yeah, just everything I've seen on this new Apple M1 chip looks so great that I had to pull the trigger and do it. So let's take a look and see what I found in my first week of use. We're going to start by talking about performance because that's probably why you're watching this, the Apple Silicon stuff. But then I will just offer some of my thoughts of switching to a MacBook Air. Uh, as a PC user, things that I like about it, like about Mac OS, the hardware, things that kind of bug me, and yeah, whether all of this, the performance and the Mac platform, live up to the hype coming from the PC. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, and actually before we look too detailed at the Mac itself, uh, I will point out at several points in this video I'm going to be comparing the MacBook Air to this X1 Carbon. This is a 7th generation Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. It has an 8th gen i7, which is a couple generations old now, but it should be a decent comparison still. This does have 16 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. Um, so I think this will be an interesting comparison. This is a pretty thin and light laptop. It's, I think, like 2.6 pounds. So this should be an interesting comparison uh, to see how a premium thin and light Windows laptop matches up against this MacBook Air, even if it isn't the absolute newest model. So let's jump right into performance and heat. For everyday stuff like web browsing, office work, and even Photoshop, it all feels remarkably similar to an Intel machine. There are some trade-offs, like with Photoshop, for example. As a non-native app, it does run through the Rosetta translation engine, which seems to cause it to take a little bit longer than normal to load. That said, performance in Photoshop, once it's loaded, is quite good, and in some aspects, like when you're zooming in on a high-resolution image, which relies on that graphical acceleration. It, it seems more fluid than on a uh, than on the X1 that I'm comparing it to, which has the Intel UHD 620 graphics. So that's pretty impressive considering that it's not a native Apple Silicon app. And yeah, that's just, just staggering that they're doing that all through the Rosetta translation engine, which is very impressive. I suspect there's some magic going on there on that M1 chip. Um, so moving on from Photoshop, I haven't done a lot of video editing yet on this machine. I have been working actually on this video and it's handled it beautifully. Um, I cheaped out on buying Final Cut Pro up to this point at least. So I'm just using iMovie right now since I know that Premiere isn't really optimized at all for the M1 and you know Photoshop might open slightly slow but then feels normal. Um, Premiere it seems like based on other reviews is doing good. Um, but it's, you know, very ultra book level, whereas Final Cut and iMovie and I think the beta version of DaVinci Resolve are all just like rocking. Um, so I'm sticking with iMovie here and yeah, it's doing great. It's uh, the way that it handles 4K footage, both from my Panasonic camera, uh, which the batteries died on all of my batteries. I was down to the last one. I needed a charge. I couldn't find the charger. So that's why I switched to the iPhone in the middle of this video. Um, but it's handling that 100 meg 4K footage beautifully, playing back, scrubbing through, um, I, there's some color correction on. It, it's just doing an absolutely wonderful job. Like all the hype from the, the video editing Q3 
community on YouTube is totally justified about the M1. It's like an amazing uh, what they're doing. What for what's normally a high performance task that's been kind of starting to change with video editing. But but yeah, video editing amazing on the M1. There is one more high performance computer activity that I enjoy, which is gaming. Um, obviously Macs are not the ideal platform for gaming, so my expectations were low coming in, but I was very impressed with the performance that I've had so far. Uh, really there are two games that I'm going to highlight because there are only so many games that I pl play that work on the Mac, um, but there's more than you would sort of think maybe if you haven't looked into it. Um, but the two I'm going to look at are Civilization V and then a first person shooter called Verdun. Starting with Civilization V, uh, this is obviously not the newest Civilization game, Civ VI is, uh, but that one, at least at full resolution, which I kind of prefer to play at, is just a little bit too much uh, for the M1. But Civ V still looks great, and in some ways I prefer it to Civ VI, and it can definitely still tax lower end systems um, at high resolutions. So the MacBook Air handles this at 1440p. I'm playing on an external monitor uh, with sort of the automatic settings, which is a mix of low, medium, and even high in some cases. Um, handles it beautifully at 1440p. Smooth, it looks great. Um, I did record this with OBS and have the output set to 720p. I tried it with 1440p so you could get the full quality, but it was really stuttery. Um, and the recording is even more stuttery than it was when I wasn't recording. So the actual gameplay was smoother than this and a lot crisper since it's downscaled to 720p. Um, but yeah, it performs great at 1440p. Uh, the X1 Carbon I tested um, has seems to be using even lower graphics. I just stuck with the automatic recommended settings on both, and this is using DirectX 9 graphics on the X1 Carbon because um, it definitely doesn't look as good. I got a weird gray bar issue. Frame rate seemed okay. If I could get the gray bar fixed, it would probably be okay, but it didn't look as good, and it wasn't quite as smooth. Um, and as you can see on the video playback, the it was a total fail, and I used the exact same settings on both in OBS, going out to 720p MP4 files, um, and the M1 handled it great. And I don't think OBS is optimized for the M1 yet either, and that X1 Carbon with the 4-core, 8-thread Intel U-series 8th gen processor, the i7, was not able to handle it, so very impressive. The second game that I'm showing you is Verdun. So this is a World War I themed first person shooter, and it's not the most demanding game. It was released in 2015, I think, um, but it is, I guess it was built on, I don't know, Vulcan or so, one of those engines that works really well with Steam's Proton, which allows you to play Windows games on Linux or on Mac OS, obviously in this case. Uh, and that's really cool because this is a Windows game. It was only developed for Windows. There's no native Linux or Mac OS version. Um, Steam's Proton is just allowing it to run, you know, kind of like it's on Windows. And the performance is fantastic. Uh, this one, you can definitely see the performance is better than on the X1 Carbon. Um, and obviously the recording came out quite a bit better. So gaming performance is um, surprisingly good. I've tried some other Apple Arcade stuff because I got, you know, the free trial, obviously. So I thought, hey, let's take a look. And I've had some trouble with the controller, so I haven't played it a ton. But some of those games look pretty good graphically, though it's sort of just a style. None of them are that, like, AAA game style. Um, and they all run really smooth at native resolution. So I think there's a lot of gaming potential on this. Obviously, it's up to game developers to actually decide to develop for the Mac which may or may not happen, probably will not happen. Um, but it does seem like there's some interesting gaming potential on this, and it does get a little toasty with gaming. All in all, the performance has absolutely lived up to the hype, and on a machine with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. There is another side of the performance hype, though, which is the battery life. Unfortunately, I've only used this for really up to 3 hours on a battery. Like I said, I've only had this a week. Um, so that's my longest session, about 3 hours away from... The, the wall. And the time I did that, actually, I did about 30 minutes of gaming, Civilization V and that, and I got it down to about 74% um, in that three hours of use. So that's, uh, that's pretty impressive, really. 26% uh, over three hours. So normally when I've been using it, it's for one to two hours, and I usually get it down to about 90%. 
and that's just watching YouTube, web browsing, chatting on Slack, just sort of the normal day-to-day -day stuff that you would do on a MacBook Air. And I guess maybe it's a fool's errand to try to extrapolate those exper experiences to project battery life. Um, I'm gonna do it anyway, though, and say probably 12 to 18 hours is what I would be getting with sort of, depending on my use, mixed use, on the M1 MacBook Air. Okay, one thing that a lot of reviewers maybe haven't been emphasizing quite enough is that when you are really pounding the MacBook Air, it can get quite warm. Uh, so when I'm playing games like either Verdun or Civilization uh, for a long period of time, it gets it gets really warm. Um, I haven't noticed any like really bad throttling. I know it happens, uh, so I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I haven't particularly noticed it yet, so maybe it just hasn't gotten warm enough. It's just you know getting warm, but not quite there. And I will say it never gets hot. It's just you know it's just warm, uh, which is pretty cool considering that it's just sitting there silently. Uh, pretty impressive and so most of the time when I'm not just hammering it, uh, it it doesn't even get above room temperature sort of heavy issues like Photoshop you can kind of feel that it's slightly warmer than room temperature but it's not really even remotely warm it's impressive how cool this machine stays during normal use but like I said it can warm up when you're playing a game on it uh, or if you're really doing some heavy video editing or something along those lines Oh yeah, and speaking of the heat, one thing that I do really enjoy about this laptop is that it's finally a laptop that I can use in bed guilt-free, and, uh, and I was wearing PJs all day today, so guaranteed flannel approved. Okay, and so I think that really covers the Apple Silicon side of the MacBook Air. So now I'm going to move on to some of my overall thoughts on the device and Mac OS itself coming from a Windows perspective. Like I mentioned, it's been a while since I've had a Mac and used it really regularly at all. Um, and so obviously when you're talking about a Mac, especially coming from Windows, the build quality is unbelievable. Uh, I've had a couple of once premium Windows laptops around, or I still do have them. I've got that X1 Carbon I've been talking about. I also have a 2016 Razer Blade Stealth and both of those are very nice Windows laptops. And while that Razor Blade Stealth gets sort of close on the build quality, it's like almost Mac-esque, it doesn't quite get there in terms of the fit and finish. And the ThinkPad is nice, but it's kind of a different type of machine where it doesn't even try to get quite as, you know, tidy and, and tight as the, as the MacBook Air is. And yeah, it's, it's a really nice machine, obviously. And simple touches, just like how precise the, the notch for the screen opening to make it easier to open uh, that cut out, how precise that is. It just makes it a really nice device to use. So moving to the I.O., I'll start with the most famous MacBook I.O. feature of all, which is the trackpad. And this is definitely an awesome trackpad. It has a lovely, lovely soft click and unmatched precision. I'll give it that. But, that said, good Windows trackpads are close enough these days that I'm not sure a Mac trackpad really lives up to the hype anymore. Like, they used to be a ton better than Windows trackpads. Even five years ago, there was a pretty big gap. But these days, both of these other two laptops, the Razer Blade Stealth, the X1, have good trackpads. And the Max is better, but it's not that much better, especially when you factor in something that bugs me, at least, which is that it doesn't have native support or built-in support. Yeah, I guess that's native support for three-finger taps, which, uh, you know, maybe not everyone uses it. Maybe no one on Mac even thinks to use it uh, for the middle click, three-finger tap for middle click. Sorry, I've left that part out. But that's a really great feature that Windows has had support for for a while. And there is an app that you can download on Mac OS that's not a big deal to, to enable that. But it's kind of weird that for a company that's so notorious or famous for being detail-oriented that they don't have that kind of a feature. Um, so yeah, the trackpad, good. I, not living up to the hype, in my opinion, and missing that, that pretty basic feature, I think, these days. The keyboard is very good. But it's not quite perfect. Um, on the positive side, on the glowingly positive side, I've actually had zero trouble getting fully up to speed on it. I think the layout is pretty awesome. And I've just found it extremely easy to get used to, um, even more than most Windows laptops. Um, it's just, yeah, I've gotten up to speed very fast. The one downside I would say about the keyboard is that the keys are a bit soft and it's sort of like, you know, there's no 
bounce back before you just get all the way to the bottom. So as I've mentioned, I use ThinkPads a lot and those are a little bit springier where it's pushing back on you before you get all the way down to the very bottom. So very good keyboard, not perfect. You know, Apple use some ThinkPads and, and learn a little bit on keyboards because there is room for improvement. All right, the screen on the MacBook Air is excellent. One of the tragedies of the Windows world is that even good displays can sometimes be further from perfect than they should be. So my X1 Carbon has the 500 nit HDR display option, which is very nice at full brightness. Unfortunately, the brightness scaling is not that kind to the display. It gets really dim really fast and the contrast seems to sort of fade. It also has some PWM flickering issues, which you'll see. So it's just not the best performance unless you're actually in an experience to crank up that 500 nit display. So the 400 nit display on the MacBook Air may not get quite as bright as the X1, but it handles changing brightness a whole lot better, uh, which adds up to a much better overall experience. All right, the speakers on the MacBook Air, uh, famously they're the best laptop speakers, the, the Apple MacBook ones. I guess the 16 inch MacBook Pro probably has the best ones. Uh, but yeah, they're light and day better than either of the other two laptops. And these are pretty good. Well, the Razer Blade Stealth has pretty good speakers. X1 Carbon, they're better than they used to be, uh, but they're still not great. So I'm gonna put in a short comparison of all three and let you decide. Okay, well up to this point I've been mostly favorable toward the MacBook Air, but one thing that does really bug me, and I know I'm late to the party on this, uh, but I'm going to rant about it anyway, is the lack of even one USB-A port. And so I guess I will defend Apple a little bit to start, which is that I actually didn't expect this to be much of an issue because USB-C has been pretty prominent for a few years. Like this was a big deal a few years ago. So I didn't expect to be annoyed by this. Unfortunately, I was pretty horrified to discover that Logitech, who I use their stuff at work, at home, like a great Logitech Synergy situation, they don't have a unifying adapter in USB-C, um, which is a problem for me because I have this plugged in. I've got a cool one cable solution where it's going to a monitor that has a USB hub that does USB-C power delivery back to the laptop. It's awesome. Um, and the display also goes through that, except for the unifying adapter does not really work very well in that built-in monitor USB hub. I think there's just interference from the monitor itself. So I'm right now, actually, I've been, I've had to resort, I tried Bluetooth, that wasn't great either, and I've had to resort to using a wired keyboard and mouse right now. So I've got a, you know, cable manage and it goes to the back of the monitor, so it's not a big deal. It's kind of like a, an iMac type of setup, but, you know, kind of a bummer that there's no way to get a USB receiver for these Logitech peripherals that goes directly into the laptop uh, without having to use an adapter that sticks out further. I know those exist, but that seems like I'd like to have it just stuck in because they're so tiny. Um, so it'd be great, Logitech, make a USB-C adapter, unifying adapter for your stuff. Okay, the fingerprint reader on the MacBook Air works great. Though I would say, I would say that was a really high I, 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 would, I, I would say it's not quite as convenient as the Windows Hello IR facial recognition. This isn't a huge deal um, and the Mac Touch ID is faster than the IR recognition, at least on the ThinkPad. So we'll call this one a draw. Hopefully Apple does bring Face ID to Macs at some point because I think it's a killer feature on a laptop and I think it makes almost more sense on a laptop or a desktop than it does on a phone because you're most of the time you're touching the phone anyway. Um, you're not always like getting, touching the power button when you turn on your laptop or bring it up to use it. And so that's it for Apple's M1 MacBook Air. 
Um, obviously, if you're a PC guy, if you're a ThinkPad fan like me, there are obviously a lot of things that you may not love about Apple's hardware, the lack of upgradability. It would be awesome to be able to drop a two terabyte SSD into this thing um, or upgrade the RAM. Though a lot of computers, even the X1 doesn't allow you to do that. Um, also, the fact that you can't repair it that easily. Um, but I think this is a situation where you really have to put all of that into the background because what Apple's doing with the M1 processor is just pretty freaking amazing. They've reached a point where their specialized hardware and their specialized software are coming together and doing something that it seems like is putting them way ahead of the pack. Uh, so right now, I think unless you're a, a PC gamer, you've got to take a really long and hard look at an Apple computer if you need a new computer, especially a laptop or that battery life can make such a big difference. Um, yeah, so that's that's really it. Kudos to Apple. I'm I'm kind of in love with this machine. I'm kind of astonished at what Apple's actually done with the performance and the power efficiency. So I think I'm going to be keeping this. If you have any questions about the MacBook Air or the M1, want me to try something out, leave a comment and I will see what I can do for you. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day.